Okay, so this will be a continuation of my topology playlist, and in this video I'll be talking about the inner product. Now, in my previous video, I mentioned that the dot product is an example of the more general inner product. And so this video, I'll basically be explaining what an inner product is, and I'll also show that the dot product is indeed an inner product. I'll prove that. So let's get right into it. So inner product, typically written like this, you know, it's with angle brackets and we have two dots. Essentially, we take two vectors, and it's essentially, it's defined... Um, with the vector space over a field. Now, I'll get into all that means in a second. Now, a good way to visualize what the inner product does is it takes two vectors and it outputs a scalar. And essentially, this is essentially what I'm doing here. We have two vectors, you know, V and V, and it outputs over a field F. Now, if you don't know what a field is, it's not particularly important for uh, this playlist. Basically, whenever I say field, just think of real or complex uh, numbers. So, again, like a dot product, we have two. We start with two vectors. That's kind of our input, and our output is scalar. That's basically what, what this is saying, and that's really what the inner product um, um, is. Now, the inner product also has some important axioms that I'm going to get into now. So, um, f the first one, of course, is that if we have the inner product of x and y, it's exactly the same thing as the inner product of y and x, and this is true for r, the real the real numbers. Now, for c, it's a little bit different because we have the inner product of x and y is equal to the inner product of y, of y and x, but it's uh, with, with its uh, conjugate. Now, this, uh, this is interesting because for complex numbers, uh, th this, when, this, when this property holds and we're dealing with spaces, we call that an inner uh, Hermitian inner product space. Now, basically, a Hermitian matrix is basically a matrix which is equal to its own conjugate transpose. So we have a matrix A, which has complex entries, not real ones. Um, so A is equal to, the, we take the conjugate of that, and then we transpose it. If, that, if, this, if this is true, then we call the matrix Hermitian. And it's typically written with A and then some kind of like, you know, a plus or a dagger. So that's essentially what a Hermitian matrix is. Um, not gonna get, I'll get into that maybe in a different video, more, more in detail. Anyways, so for a third axiom is that if we have, suppose we take some scalar alpha, and if we multiply this scalar alpha by a vector u, and then take that and, and in, do the inner product of that vector with v, that's exactly the same thing as if we took the inner product of u and v and then multiplied it by the scalar alpha. The next axiom we have is uh, if, if u and u, um, are, if, if we take the inner product of u with itself, that is, it's always going to be equal, it's always going to be greater than or equal to zero. Now, it is also, it's only equal to zero if u is the zero vector. That's the only, it's the only time when, when we, the inner product is equal to zero, is if, the ve is if we're doing, we're dealing with the zero vector. Otherwise, the inner product is always greater than zero. That's basically what, the, what that's saying. And our fourth axiom here, let's suppose we have three vectors this time. If we do u plus v, and then take the inner product of that with w, that's the same thing as if we did the inner product of u dot v plus uh, the inner product of v dot w. That is the fourth axiom. So basically, any time uh, we're dealing with vectors and these conditions hold, then, then it's an inner product. And of course, then we're dealing with, and if, there, if, there's a met, if, if we're dealing with a metric space and it also has an inner product, we're dealing with the Hilbert space, which I talked about in the previous video. So again, it kind of all comes together. Now, Hilbert spaces are basically metric spaces which have the inner product, or they're vector spaces which have inner product defined on them. So that's, that's what the inner product is. So now to prove that the dot product is an inner product. So suppose we have two, uh, three vectors, uh, u, v, and w, uh, and h, where h is you know, just uh, n-dimensional real vector space. Um, we know that the norm, uh, which I'm kind of abusing that right now, the norm of u is just you know, u dot u to the one half, and this is pretty familiar stuff. And, so, and also the norm of u is equal to zero if and only if u is equal to zero. And we kind of know this. We kind of, you know, if we do the dot product, and you know, or if we're trying to find the norm, uh, of, of a vector, we we know we know this to be true. We can just do a few examples to convince ourselves convince ourselves that that is the case. So let's check the other axioms. So let's suppose that u is equal to one two three, v is four five six, and then w is negative one negative two three. And again, I just chose these vectors at random. You could put any real numbers um, uh, in uh, any any real numbers that you want to. Um, complex numbers again, we're gonna have to be a little bit more careful. But for now, let's just do with real. Let's just deal with real numbers. So. Are, we're not going to check that one because we're only dealing with real numbers. So let's check the third, the third axiom. So we, we're, and let's let's take our scalar to be two. We take this, we take it to be one. We're not going to really see that this property works. Let's take our scalar to be two. Alpha is two. So so what we're going to do here is we're going to take the let's so we're going to have two on the outside. Then we're going to have the dot product of u of, of um, u 
Actually, let me write it a different way. Good. I want to make sure this is uh, very, very clear. So let's say first we have two times the dot, uh, two times u, so one, two, three, and then we dot that with v. Yeah, we dot that with v, so we have four, five, six. And what I'm basically claiming here is, let me just do that. So uh, basically what I'm claiming here is that this is going to be exactly the same thing as if we did the dot product of u and v and then multiplied it by 2 rather than doing it this way. So of course here we're going to have, uh, I'm just going to write it down here, we have our new vector is going to be 2, 4, 6, dot, 4, 5, 6, and that's just going to end up getting, uh, it's going to give us 8, it's going to give us 20, and it's going to give us 36. Now, to, now to, prove, to prove this axiom, remember I said that it has to be exactly the same thing as 2 uh, times, two, this has to be equal to 2 times the dot product of u and v. So we have 1, 2, 3, and then dot it with 4, 5, 6. So we're going to have 2 here times 4 times 10 times 18. And lo and behold, we, have, we see here that 8, 20, and 36. Now, of course, I only did, this works for any real numbers. You can always substitute this with like A, B, and C, um, and just show that this works in the general case. But here, you know, we, we see that this property works. That, so th this is true. Now let's check the fourth axiom down here, because this is, this is the more interesting one. So again, what we're really saying here is with this, this time we need three vectors, and u plus v dot, or inner product w is the same thing as inner product uw plus inner product vw. So let's just get uh, into, into that once I finish erasing this. Okay. So uh, let's get right, so let's get right to it. So this time we're gonna have u plus v. So u plus v is gonna be equal to five, and it's gonna be equal to seven, and our third is gonna be equal to uh, nine. That's u plus v, and we have to dot that with w. So we're gonna have negative one, negative two, three, and then so our result is going to be negative five, uh, negative fourteen, and then twenty-seven. That is well. That's 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 this part. Now, remember, we have to show that u uh, dot w um, is equal to v, v dot w. Or, sorry, u, u dot w plus v dot w is the same thing as what's on the left-hand side. So, we have u. So, let's go again. We u dot w. So, we're going to have u dot w is going to be equal to 4 um, times negative 1. So, we have negative 4. 5 times negative 2 gives us negative 10. And six times three gives us eighteen. So that's u. That's u dot w, and we have to add that to v dot w. So this time we actually I made a mistake here. I did I did v dot w here. That's v dot w. So now we're going to do u dot w. So now we're going to have one times negative one. So we have negative one times negative two, which is going to give us negative four. And then three times three gives us nine. And lo and behold, four plus negative one gives us negative five. Negative 10 plus negative 4 gives us negative 14, and then 18 plus 9 gives us 27. So now we've shown that this, that this indeed holds true. And again, if you wanted to prove this in a general case, all you would really do here is replace 1, 2, 3 with A, B, C, you know, D, F, uh, H, I, J, you know, so on and so forth. You can just replace these with letters or variables and then show that this works for uh, any A, B, C, or U, V, W in, in H. So this is a pretty good stopping point. And so next video, I'll be talking about Cauchy sequences and why they're so important for understanding metric spaces. And after that, I will um, finally get into what a topology is. Because after all, this is a playlist on topology, and we should get to what, that, what topology means uh, later on. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next video.